We spoke earlier about the um, Tesla Roadster not being a sustainable vehicle. Had they continued to produce Tesla Roadsters, they would be bankrupt today, uh, or they would have to raise the price so that they're not selling them under cost. What happened though was, while they were clearing out the final Roadsters, they were also working on a project at the time called White Star, which was the Tesla Model S program. And this is a basically a four-door grocery getter sedan compared to the sports car that we've been looking at, but it's an extraordinarily powerful four-door grocery getter sedan. I drive a P90D Ludacris, and the zero to 60 on that car is 2.8 seconds. Remember the Roadster was 3.7 seconds. So that 90D Ludacris with four seats, four doors, is actually faster than that little sports car. This particular car is actually a P100D Ludacris, which is even faster than my P90. And um, it is a flood damage car, which is the other thing that we started doing about three, four years ago. We were buying flood damaged Tesla Model S's because we had a lot of hurricanes at that time and there were, there were a lot of flood damaged cars available. And we also found that uh, we had little competition because body shops typically which spray paint and bend metal uh, are scared of the electronics problems in cars like this and we're just the opposite we don't like paint and metal we fix electronics we got so good at these flood damaged cars that we could tell by the water level and they oftentimes draw a chalk mark on the um, on the level that the water hit on the car we could tell what's wrong with the car are the chargers gone are the seat control modules gone this particular car is still sitting here because we are very busy with Roadsters. It's been here over two years. We just simply can't get to it to finish it. This car came out of Florida. It was also a hurricane flood damage car. Uh, minimal water damage. We find that the insurance companies are always uh, quick to total cars like this, electric cars anyway if they've had any sort of water damage because there's a lot of um, ignorance about what really happens in the car when you have water damage. Up to a certain level, these cars are quite restorable. By the time you get up into the headrests and you have mold, this car would not, I would not recommend tackling anything like this uh, because you have way too many connectors that are compromised, sub-assemblies and modules. This car is unique. For another reason, if you look at the side badge right here, it says signature. This indicates that this is one of the first 250 cars made. This happens to be VIN number 69. So our feeling is that this car will be collectible someday and end up in someone's collection as one of the early first Tesla Model S's. The Model S, by the way, came out in 2012 and it was a huge hit. It won a number of um, a number of awards, and uh, to this day is considered one of the uh, most premier luxury vehicles ever made and most successful. Uh, the good part for Tesla was this car was finally sustainable in that they were able to generate some profit and margin each time they sold one, and that's really what the um, success of Tesla is about nowadays. Then they moved into other platforms. They decided they wanted a larger Model S. They called that the Model X, which is a uh, SUV type vehicle. And you can see one over there with the gull wing doors open. Um, Elon was never one to shy away from technical challenges. He started with the presenting door handles, which initially were a huge problem because they were very expensive to build. I've heard reports that the original door handles on a Tesla Model S cost them around $1,700 a piece. So you've got almost $8,000 just in door handles in a car. Of course, with scale of economies and high volume production, they uh, eventually brought that cost way down.